this is a 67 kilo battery. There you go, low its line. It's trapped to a 40 euro cart situated on a rather large truck. And it's going down this rather flimsy ramp on the ice with the aid of these dogs by me. And that battery weighs 10 kilos more than I do. Enjoy. Before I do anything at all with these batteries, I need to do something about this terminal situation. And what's caused this is probably a faulty tightening torque on the mounting screw. They seem to be extremely tight, so that could potentially cause something to fail and leak just a little bit of electrolyte out there, or rather fumes. So. Let's try to get this off, if possible. That one's well and truly stuck down. There we go. That's rather nasty. There's plenty of material left in it though, but... Certainly the surface has been turned to dust. Either way, I've got some cooking soda and water, so... All we need to do is have ourselves a little vinegar volcano. That certainly makes me feel like a mad scientist. The water's turning blue. Sadly though, not all of them are coming off, so... This one I'm going to have to clean while mounted to a battery. So I'm just going to have to use the old toothbrush and uh, rinse it very thoroughly with distilled water once I'm done. But yeah, the electrolyte fume has, has certainly eaten away every little gram of plating on this piece of copper. The screw is strangely intact though. Must be made of some rather inert me metal. Well, I purchased myself a tool today. Of a larger variety. And I took one of the stock screws, terminal screws of these batteries. And I'm glad I did because for one it's obvious that my cleaning didn't go all around which I was kind of expecting but uh, my fear was confirmed that uh, the corrosion has gone beyond just uh, the area around the terminal but it has indeed corroded the terminal itself so all the conducting path we have left is this little piece of metal down there which I'm sure can handle most of the current but Especially wouldn't be, be able to put it anywhere near as much current as it was specified to do without overheating the terminal. So, I've got to clean this stuff up properly. Probably replace this screw because it seems as if some stuff has gone down actually into the threads of it. So, I'm going to have to clean that out and reinstall something that isn't a hex head. 
A little bit of cleaning and some very light wire brushing later. We're getting down to something, but damn, you can really see how far the acid has eaten into the copper. This certainly wasn't the texture of this thing when it was new. You can see here just on the contact area, it's clean. Thankfully the contact also came off out very good on the battery. Just lightly wire brushing it, so I think this one's good to go back. Properly this time. Right, so with that out of the way, we can consider what kinds of batteries these actually are. And they certainly aren't shabby. They're obviously power safe 12V170F, which are 12 volt 170 amp hour batteries, uh, rated at both the 10 and 8 hour rate at 1.8 to 1.75 volts per cell respectively and <laughs> of course weighing in at 67 kilos now something that's particularly impressive about these batteries is the charge by stamp uh, these batteries are from 2008 so they are only 7 years old which is not too bad for 12 year rated batteries and I've got this one hooked up to a battery charger and it certainly seems to be rather fully charged since it's drawing a whooping 240 milliamps so I've got the timer set up let's try and give this one a cycle just for kicks well, I'm pretty certain we're drawing 10 amps out of this. Yep. Wow. I can right away say that this is going to be the single most impressive battery I've tested in my entire brief battery testing career. Because... <laughs> It's been drawing 10 amps for um, tens of seconds now, and it, it isn't even approaching 13 volts yet. My 100 amp hour salts there drop below 13 in 2 seconds flat, and my big flooded batteries drop below 13 in something of something similar. Even when I've tested stuff like newer car batteries, they drop below 13 in no time at all. I've got to stop filming, this is ridiculous. So, my clock only goes one time around, it can only measure 12 hours at a single rotation, but I'm going to go to bed and I'm reasonably certain, judging from the impressively low impedance of this battery, that uh, this clock is going to have gone over one turn around when I get back. That clock is going to be at least somewhere around here at 120, 30, 40, 50. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying at least 150 amp hours at the very least. We're still not even below 12.6. <laughs> Well, it is now 110 amp hours later. Well, almost 111 even. And we're still ticking away. With a healthy watt voltage remaining in the battery. Even though it's starting to become more discharged, voltage certainly isn't showing any signs of dropping off quickly. So there's plenty more to grab. Even if this battery is just going to drop dead at 120 amp hours, I'm happy. But I'm reasonably certain that it'll go beyond that. But I've continuously misjudged how these old batteries behave, so 
I suppose I shouldn't be making any statements, but fingers crossed. And the result is in. 169.6 amp hours. It doesn't get much closer to 170 than that. Since all these cells seem to be in very similar conditions, I'm a happy camper. I still need to test all of them though, but it's going to take a while since a single test like this will take 17 hours. Either way, got to get on with it. So, after being cycled for about 6 times each, a couple of bit more, a couple of bit less, these 125 amp hour power safe batteries have started to reach an equilibrium and uh, judging from the ones that have the terminals removed and just the screws on this one I'm sure you can figure out what the verdict will be indeed we have four that are reasonably good that I will consider using in my solar system where this one at 65 amp hours this one at 74 this one also at 74 and this one at 65 so this four could do make a a decent string in a 48 volt system this one ended up at about 45 amp hours as you can see it started out at 35 and it's kind of just stopped at 45 so I suppose it might be a decent spare or something like that in case one of the, the 60 amp hours once failed after a year or so after it's lost after the others have lost some capacity the others well you can see the values 13 amp hours not worth it eight and a half not worth it and this one is that uh, really really poor one which has uh, made a kind of astonishing recovery getting up to 27 amp hours after a few cycles starting out at 4 but sadly it's got to go at less than one quarter capacity it's just not worth saving and indeed I'm going to start running out of space and the reason for that is these these are 12 170 amp hour power safe batteries 8 from 2007 and 4 from 2011 and as for all of these my L12 volt system well the sad truth is I'm kind of starting to run out of space yeah things have kind of escalated so we have these but these are from 2008 they're all in good nick had these corroded terminals which I've fixed these eight are from 2007 I'm fairly sure yeah 2007 eight of those and then these final four are from 2011 these were just replaced because they were doing a systems upgrade and they didn't want to mix and match used and new batteries so I just chucked them away and I thankfully managed to get my hands on them so really in light of these 20 170 amp hour batteries these 125s which are 14 years old don't really look particularly fancy nor does my random 12 volt bank made out of what do we have? we have 11, no, 9 year old 
truck batteries, six year old truck batteries, twelve and fourteen year old telecom batteries, and two new car batteries. Yeah, I'm probably not going to chuck those two because they are in very good nick and I might have a use for them. Put either of them in my truck, but uh, following that overflow disaster, which all of these seem to be prone to doing, if you look at the soil levels there, I'm not sure I want to keep them. They are, after all, from 2003, and a couple of them are from 2001. So, they are a bit iffy. Granted, some of them do have very good capacity. But, yeah, with very good capacity, that's 125 amp hours. And that's still nothing compared to 20... <laughs> 20 170 amp hour batteries. This is just ridiculous looking at this stuff, really. I I I can't believe I've gotten my hands on these. In particular for the price I've paid for them. Essentially the price I've paid for gas is the same as what I've paid for the batteries. So now I need to just get my battery room back in order it's all in pieces. I'm going to fix this water leak properly, that's what's on the agenda. Construct a few proper battery racks. I'm hoping to squeeze in at least a width of 8 170s along that wall and uh, I'm going to have to see what I can do with this wall or perhaps this wall. And uh, that'll be it. I've got some scrap wood for making racks out if I don't know how far I'll get with this, but I've got some <laughs> pallets outside as well. My requirements aren't particularly fancy, as long as they stay in place and not just resting on top of each other. Well, the only problem I can spot with these is that, like the other ones, a couple of them, well, literally a couple of them, have corroded terminals, but they cleaned up nicely on the other ones, so I don't see why they wouldn't have to and with a bit of luck, talking the screw down properly, we will at least limit the extent of the leak. They certainly aren't seeping acid, that's for sure. It doesn't take much at all to make copper look like this. It's just a few drops really steaming out of there. It'll take, so I'm confident all these cells are just fine. <laughs> uh, I've measured the voltage on them and although well, they're taking, taken out of duty today so their voltages are going to be rather high but they were all within very uh, tight tolerances all of them within 13.15 to 13.23 volts or something like that so yeah now I'm going to clean those terminals up then get to work on constructing some racks then, after the outside dries up, I'm going to take care of a leak in the battery room and uh, then hopefully install the batteries along with my fancy new technology which is arriving shortly. I also got a couple of bags of extras including a heap of copper jumpers and terminal protectors and all the old screws that were used to connect them up. The new batteries were M8 so they couldn't use them. So I decided to actually undo and check the terminals on all of these batteries uh, because well some of them, even the 2011s, seem to be suffering some s from some minor leakage. Probably due to incorrect talking of the terminals, so I've taken them all off, I'm going to wire brush them very slightly and remount them using a proper torque wrench ensuring that they mounted for proper torque and I've stuck the worst ones in a solution of baking soda and water and yeah, that's acid well, that's uh, 
copper sulfate, which is created by copper being exposed to acid, but you get the idea. It wouldn't be green if <laughs> there wasn't acid in involved. So, now I've just got to remount all these and clean this up. Oh, there we go. Everything put back together, mounted and torqued to spec. So, the batteries are basically ready now. <laughs> and uh, all I need to do is wait for the weather to clear up so that I can get to the battery room and waterproof it, which is an agonizing wait. But it'll happen sooner or later. Until then, I'll just wait for some of that fancy technology which will enable me to test these batteries rather efficiently, I believe. So, looking forward to that as well. So, thanks for watching. Cheerio!